Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. There's a lot of stuff happening in tech right now, isn't there? And, well, AMD seem to be at the forefront of that. I hadn't actually intended to put out a video today, hence the lack of shaving and the craziness in the background, um, because I'm currently working on something that I can't discuss. But, uh, yeah, basically... Pretty much last minute I've been given some information regarding AMD's FSR slash Computex uh, event. Plus on top of that um, we have some pretty big leaks concerning Zen 4 and what they could mean for Ryzen. But let's begin with FSR and uh, AMD's event shall we. Long story short FSR is looking to be really good. For quite a while now I've been stating that one of my sources told me up to 200% performance and it was going to be a temporal base and the quality was really good. Basically not quite as good as Nvidia's DLSS solutions but still pretty darn good and certainly better than what Nvidia had managed with DLSS 1. And this does seem to be backed up by what my sources are telling me now. Essentially there are 10 game studios which will be using this technology however AMD are not going to be telling us all of the projects at this event. Instead, this will come later on down the line. Possibly the 22nd is the date I'm hearing. As for the quality, well, um, that's where things get a little more interesting. So again, it does seem, because it's temporal base, to, um, that if you're looking at still images, the difference in quality is going to be bigger, than, or indeed if you're slowing down the footage, but if you're kind of playing in gameplay, there's a bigger chance you won't really notice it. Furthermore, there are different quality presets. So just like DLSS, let's say you're upsampling from, let's say, 1080p to 1440p, the visual quality is going to be less than if you're upsampling from, say, I don't know, 1440p to 4K, for example. So that's pretty obvious, but what about the performance numbers? Well, um, I do have some slides, but I'm not allowed to show them. But yeah, I will read out the numbers for you. So the game that we are seeing is Godfall. So that seems to be the title that AMD are really showing off at the moment. And they were running the title in 4K Epic preset with ray tracing enabled. And they were uh, achieving, this is by the way on an RX 6800 XT, which is pretty important to know, they were receiving 49 FPS in native resolution. And now I'll go through the different quality settings. So there's ultra quality, which is 78, 99 FPS for quality, 124 FPS for balanced, and finally we have performance, which is stated to be 150 FPS. Now, if you're doing the maths at home, that means there's a significant difference, of course, between the higher quality presets, or indeed native, and the fastest preset. So, you know, <laughs> it does depend, but we could be looking at up to three times an increase in performance. But what's quite interesting is, to my understanding, AMD are pushing this to be less than. They're stating it could be like two times increase. Now, I'm not exactly sure why this is. I don't know whether it's because there's like an outlier case with Godfall or whether they feel that the higher quality modes are not something that you're going to want to choose or what. The story is not clear. TLDR though, this is looking to be really cool. Frankly, I would rather play the game at slightly, you know, um, I don't know, kind of like the medium to higher quality presets just to get those additional frames. But Naturally, this will depend on, you know, your usage case, what card you have, what type of game you're playing, and so on and so on. Let's face it, if you're playing a slower game, let's just say, for example, Mass Effect. This is not one of the games that does have this, because it doesn't really need it, but just an example title, because I'm actually playing through the trilogy uh, remaster at the moment. But let's say you're getting, like, 60, and then, you know, you whack this on and it gets you to, like, 80 or 90. That's fine. I don't really need like 150, 200 frames a second in that game. But again, that's just my personal takeaway. There are going to be some other things that AMD will announce as well. This is going to focus a lot on mobile, but I was told that we will expect announcements for both the 6700 and 6800M, and we will also see the 5600G and 5700G announced as well. There's going to be some other announcements too, but I'm not going to go into details of that because I don't think it's cool of me to spoil the entire conference, 
But yeah, so long story short, FSR is looking to be pretty darn tasty. Moving on though, and uh, Executable Fix on Twitter has fixed this up. You get it? With some very interesting things concerning the next gen processors. So Raphael has actually some renders. Now it's worth noting that these are not official and have been created by Executable Fix. And he claims that they're pretty accurate, but not 100% accurate. Now these are for Raphael. And well, there's several very interesting things you'll notice about this. The first is that Raphael itself, well, it's on an LGA uh, socket. So it's 1718. Uh, Videocards.com did a pretty nice comparison between the LGA 1718 socket, which of course is AM5, and Intel's older load socket. I think it's absolutely brilliant that it's 18 pins more. I don't know why, but that just tickles me. I don't, I know it means nothing, Like there could be three pins if it performs as well, but it just, it just makes me laugh. It's like, no, we're beating you by 18 pins, damn it. But either way, if you look at the uh, package, you know, they are roughly kind of similar to one another. Um, they are a largely different shape, however, with um, Intel's uh, processor being taller rather than more of a square shape, whereas Raphael is essentially the same package size as what we have now, at least in terms of, you know, the diameter, it's 40 by 40. Anyway, the processor will, of course, still leverage uh, dual channel memory, although it's going to be DDR5. And from what we are understanding, it will also be using PCIe Gen 4 and not Gen 5. I actually asked a couple of people about this and why AMD decided to go with Gen 4 rather than Gen 5, um, because obviously Intel are not doing that for Alder Lake. From what we understand, it's going to be leveraging PCIe Gen 5. And from what I understand, um, speaking to a couple of uh, motherboard manufacturers, Basically, AMD seemed to be concerned with, well, basically the cost and other, you know, validation and other such things. And they believe it's not necessary for home markets. Now, in terms of graphics, it's probably not going to be, although we still don't know about things such as sampler feedback. But uh, on the server market anyway, there are different questions. Like, for example, you know, super fast drives definitely could use it. Or uh, especially in a couple of years time and also networking. Now the reason I was surprised that it wasn't in uh, the AM5 boards is because originally I had been told that they were indeed going to be PCIe Gen 5 but yeah that doesn't seem to be true and speaking to a couple of uh, OEM uh, sorry motherboard manufacturers they do tell me that uh, the leaks for the 600 series do seem to be pretty accurate and they will indeed incorporate 1718 socket and it will of course be the 600 series and the other things that we've discussed but getting back to the actual chip itself in the package I must say that it really interests me because by golly gosh this looks really tall um, and it does make me wonder if AMD are kind of getting us ready for different configurations going forward, either for increased package sizes in terms of more cores, which I'm still not convinced about. I still feel that we're going to go with 16 cores on the highest end or possibly stack to dies. Now, of course, this is just me speculating based on a package shot. And we certainly can't make complete guesses as to what AMD's plans are going forward. But there's a pretty good chance at this point that AMD are considering some very interesting things, for, for example, APUs. And we all know at this point about things like uh, Milan X and Genoa X, which of course are basically 3D stacked. And I've discussed those quite recently too. AMD are certainly setting things up. It kind of feels like, in a way, Zen 4 is, and indeed the socket itself, is kind of... Mm, I guess kind of setting the stage as to like a grander design. Raphael is, in my opinion, going to be a very cool processor. And I believe that the transition from DDR4 to DDR5 is probably going to bring some significant upticks in performance for both Intel and AMD. I'll be very curious to how this affects, well, more mobile focused solutions. But, well, that's something for us to discuss in the future. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. A little more stuff if you have enjoyed it. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day.
Bye for now.